So my name is David Brayford. I work for HPE uh, in the research labs, and I'm basically going to talk about other workflows. It's not really going to go into much detail. It's just going to be an overview of what are potential other workloads which uh, could be used in HPC or in other um, areas. Okay, so this is a project I work, worked on a long time ago before I even started at HP, so I can talk about it quite freely. Uh, we had this project called auto-tuning, and one of the things which the um, project required was to see which is the optimal uh, uh, compiler uh, options for particular workflows and, and applications. So what we had was we would submit a job to the HPC system as, as a batch, so in a batch system, and uh, we would basically recompile, run a few tests, recompile, run a few tests, recompile, run a few tests, right, with different options. However, we found out that on the compute node, they didn't have the Fortran and the C header file, so we couldn't compile because the uh, uh, compute nodes are for running stuff and not for building stuff. So how did we uh, solve it? We said, okay, let's uh, see if we can do it in containers. And we basically ran it in containers. Uh, we basically, instead of submitting just a normal job, we just submitted a container which ran all the jobs, gave us all the answers back, and it was good. And uh, the, uh, there's a bit, a bit at the bottom about automatic tuning of HPC applications. Uh, that was in a book which uh, I, I was involved in and uh, got information of it about that. So if you want to look at it, it's uh, on there. So the next one, uh, I was actually going to leave this out because for AI, everybody talks about AI now in containers. I d it's it's old hat, we don't want to do it. So, But then I, I was chatting to a few people and said, actually, we still need to talk about how, how to run AI systems in containers and why you do it. So uh, one of the problems is that if you try to install AI software inside the module systems, they use Python and a lot of them have the same dependencies, the different packages and the different versions. So what happens is you install something like TensorFlow, and then you install an, an hour or a day later PyTorch, and the uh, uh, dependency libraries in, the, in Python get changed behind the scenes, and you don't know about it. So whatever you built last works, and whatever you built before that basically fails. And then you're going to have people saying, oh, I'm doing my PhD, I've, I've been using this version of whatever, PyTorch, TensorFlow, and it's a very old version. If you don't have it on the system, how do you do it? So containerize everything. Uh, there are issues in terms of you need to set up the, especially distributed systems, you need to set up the MPI, and if you're using uh, GPUs and accelerators, you need to set them up, and there's a couple of papers on that as well. So this is another project I worked at before I was on at HPE, so I can, again, talk about this as well. Um, the, the problem was we wanted to run uh, quantum simulators on a HPC system. And uh, we wanted to run on lots of different systems. And so what we used is we, we used containers because we wanted to be able to build things quite easily. And we're using Julia, and the HPC system didn't have Julia on it at the time, so we basically did it in containers. We ran it on lots of different architectures, from CPU only to CPU with GPU. We ran it distributed across with MPI. Uh, we ran it on at different e at different centers, and it was quite easy. And uh, you know, we it took probably like 20 minutes to build the container. It would take you a lot longer trying to get the uh, uh, HPC center to install the dependencies for you to actually build the stuff as well. So that was quite quick as well. So this is something I actually have no uh, experience in, but it's uh, going to be a big issue for the uh, the HP uh, uh, centers eventually is bioinformatics because they have really complicated workflows and the data's getting bigger and their desktops and workstations are not going to be powerful enough or have enough memory to sort of handle their ever-increasing workflows. Um, you can imagine there's potentially uh, hundreds of bio bioinformatics workloads and if you think of you're working at a HPC center installing software, you'd be spending it forever basically rebuilding it because everybody will want one thing different. So you'll have to do that again, so you're spending a lot of time doing it. And then if you want to move it to a different system, you've got to basically work with the uh, data center staff to do the same thing again. And they basically probably save you know, thousands of hours if you basically just just rebuild the, the, uh, your, your containerized workflow on the different systems. So that's uh, an, an example. I don't have, I've never done this, so I can't tell you what the pros and cons are, what are the gotchas, but it's uh, a, a growing um, 
area. So the final one is secure workloads. And this is very interesting because I'm not necessarily talking about the spy stuff uh, and uh, yeah, the super secret stuff, but this is thinking about medical data, right? So if you basically got CT scans or MRI scans, they're getting more and more larger in size. They're getting more uh, higher fidelity. Uh, so you're talking lots of data and you want to process it. And so for example, you have, um, a hundred or a thousand scans you want to process. Uh, if you're doing it on a single desktop and it takes like an hour, it's going to take you a thousand hours because it's going to be in serial. But on a HPC system, it could take one hour to get them all done. And that would mean that the doctor can give you the all clear or say, here's a treatment plan, a much quicker, and you, you want that. Um, the actual, some of the problems you're going to get is what you need to do is you want to ensure that the, the uh, HPC center staff, including the system admins, can't read the data. So the data has to be encrypted all the time because they're not working for the hospital staff. They haven't done HIPAA or whatever um, training they need to ensure that they, they are able to look at the data. So one of the methods is, is to encrypt the data, move it to the HPC center and have a, uh, a, an encrypted uh, or a secure enclave. And that would be a container. And basically you would take your encrypted data you would copy it into the um, secure enclave, unencrypt it inside the secure enclave, run the uh, whatever processing you need, re-encrypt it, and then write it back onto the disk, and then t send it back to the hospital. So um, it's one of the things which is like really interesting to do. However, it's uh, quite complex to do, and uh, it's easy to mess up. Anyone who's done anything with encryption, they know that it's pretty easy to lose up with that. So this is one of the, the sort of uh, things a lot of people are looking into. I don't know of any products out there which do this, but you know, potentially if you can do this for the medical field, you know, that's gonna be big for um, large HPC centers because now the, uh, the hospitals can um, uh, couple up with a, a data center. They can do all the processing knowing it's gonna be encrypted. They know they're not gonna get sued and uh, they can get the uh, results to the patients faster, and that's it.